Brownies need really explaining if you've never made them before. Because they're not like conventional cakes. To begin making them, place a heat-proof bowl over a pan of barely simmering water, making sure the bowl isn't touching the water. Then break into it 125 grams of dark 70% chocolate. Then add 175 grams of block butter cut into cubes. What's going to happen is that in 5 to 10 minutes, they're going to slowly melt together. Give it a stir from time to time. And when it's completely smooth and shiny like this, remove it from the heat. Now, place 275 grams of caster sugar in a bowl, along with three large eggs, and whisk them together lightly, not overbeating. To this add 75 grams of plain flour, a teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And give it all a good mix before you stir in the melted chocolate mixture. Next, 150 grams of some chunky oven roasted and chopped Brazil nuts. And that's it. Pour the brownie mixture into our oblong tin with a liner. Then bake in the center of a preheated oven for 30 minutes. Once it's springy in the middle, remove it from the oven Place the tin on a cooling rack and leave it to get cold. Using a sharp knife, divide it into 12 squares. Now have a close look at this, because it's very moist and squidgy inside, and people often think it's not cooked, but that is exactly how it's supposed to be. And really, the only way to find out is to bite into one then you'll never look back. Now a very special cake, which really hits the spot for a special occasion or a birthday. I call it squidgy chocolate cake because that's what it is. There's no flour in it. It has a light souffle-like texture, a chocolate mousse filling, and then it gets decorated with chopped chocolate. First, I'm going to show you the chocolate mousse filling. Place a bowl like before over some barely simmering water, ensuring the bowl doesn't touch the water. Then add 225 grams of dark 70% chocolate and 100 mils of warm water. Give it five to 10 minutes to melt, stirring from time to time with a wooden spoon until it's smooth and glossy. Now I'm going to show you how to separate eggs. The first rule is always one at a time, because if you break a yolk, it won't spoil all the others. What you do is hold the egg over one bowl and have another bowl beside it. Crack the egg around its centre on the side of the bowl then with both hands, break it into two halves, one in each hand. Now you slide the yolk back and forth from one half of the shell to the other. And as you go, the white will trickle through, keeping the yolk intact. Then place the yolk in the other bowl. If you happen to get a bit of shell in, just take it out with a spoon. We've got eight eggs in all in this recipe and two yolks are going to join the chocolate mixture, whisking them first. Mm. 
Next, we're going to whisk the egg whites. For this, the bowl and the whisk need to be dry and clean because egg whites don't like any grease. This time we're going to need masses of air, so start with the whisk on a slow speed and gradually increase the speed until the eggs become foamy. Then the air will create bubbles and the whites double in volume. Keep going until you get soft peaks like this. Then stop, because if you over-whisk, the bubbles break and you lose the air. Now you fold them into the chocolate mixture. And remember, as in lesson two, to use gentle folding movements to keep in all that precious air. Cover the chocolate mixture with cling film and chill for 30 to 45 minutes, but no longer than that, otherwise it becomes too thick to spread. Now for the cake. And six more eggs need to be separated, but remember, the cake will eventually serve 10 to 12 people. The whites go into one mixing bowl and the yolks into another. Start by whisking the egg yolks until they begin to thicken. Then add 110 grams of caster sugar and continue to whisk until the mixture feels thick but don't over whisk because it shouldn't be too stiff. If you watch this bit a couple of times, you will clearly see the consistency. It mustn't get too thick or turn pale. Now sift in 50 grams of cocoa powder and whisk till it's blended in. For the next stage, I keep a pair of spare beaters handy, but without them, you need to wash and dry the chocolatey ones really thoroughly. Whisk the whites just the same as before until they've doubled in volume and formed soft peaks. Then take a large metal spoon and gently fold the whites into the chocolate mixture, digging the spoon right down to the base before folding over. When it's all folded in, pour the mixture into our lined Swiss roll tin and bake it in a preheated oven on a high shelf for 20 to 25 minutes until risen and puffy, like a souffle. It won't look like it's cooked, but it will be, so don't be alarmed when you see it start to sink back down, because that's how it should be. When it's cool, as you can see, it looks crinkly on the surface. Then turn the cake out. Have a piece of parchment paper ready on a board. Gently loosen it from the sides and flip it over. Then carefully peel away the linings. Now cut the cake in half, not lengthways. You need to end up with two oblongs. To prepare the topping and filling, place 100 grams of dark chocolate on a chopping board and start with about a third. Using a knife, cut it into thin shards, starting at one end and working along. Then repeat with the rest of the chocolate. Next, whip 425 mils of double cream until it's thick and spreadable like this.
Place one half of the cake on a serving plate and, using a palette knife, spread over half the chocolate mousse filling. Then spread a quarter of the cream over and sprinkle on half the chocolate shards. On goes the other half of the cake and the rest of the chocolate. Now cover the whole of the cake with the rest of the whipped cream using a palette knife to make a striped effect. This cake is a bit more bother than all the others, but it's special. And once you taste it, light, chocolatey and squidgy, I know you'll think it's worth it. I hope I've now given you a good grounding so you can always enjoy making cakes. And we'll be back in the summer with another cookery school collection here online. Mm -hmm.